Welcome to my fish room. Let's check it out. Bear with me. It's a work of progress, but it's been done with minimal effort as far as maintenance and keeping, and it's been kept simple with the way nature intended. No extra airlines, no extra this, that, and the other. No, hardly any water changes throughout months. I'm not saying those are bad things. There are different ways to keep aquariums, and it's more on how we keep them and where we get our fish. That plays a big factor in it. So join me for my dirty fish room tour. All right, so here's the layout. I'm in a 30 by 40 barn. And as you walk in the door, boom. You get greeted by a bunch of tanks. This is the shrimp central rack. This is kind of my auxiliary grow out rack. We've got storage back there. And then I've got a little closet here. That's the shipping command meditation area. Pretty much contemplation area and then over here eventually i want this to be more plant focused but right now it's breeding focus everything in here is pretty much breeding focus plus the big pond we've got some temporary tubs that i had to put together during our move some here and there aquariums as you can see in the back wall but we're going to go over what all i'm doing with this space what's in here some of the projects i'm working on what all i've got breeding in here what i've been learning as well as what the future is going to be holding for this and as you can see i'm still using some of this area for build space because building it up and not having another space to work it all kind of has to mash together but there you go you got a nice little overview of everything because the design of the fish room is actually based off of my perspective here. This is my chair where I sit. As you can see, there's still a lot of space to grow and put tanks. Especially on this back wall, I'll end up putting more 40s down this way. This whole wall is going to get some work. I'm actually about to put in a window right in this area. At some point, hoping to get to that sooner than later, I'm going to slap that down sideways that way i'll have a nice view because out of this is that pond as you can see on the side here i've got a pond over here so if i got the side window and then i got that front window to look at this would be the view so that's the future plan for that space plus i am planning on continuing the shelving across as well you can never have enough shelving as well as enough tanks that's why i ended up going high with a lot of these racks here this rack triple 75s triple 40s quadruple 40s another reason for that you'll see plants around the fish room lady lrb she's been getting into plants a lot as you can see I've just got a few here and there, plus we've got storage up above. Once again, can never have enough storage. This is the back side of that triple 75 rack, which this is meant to be a 20 high rack. As you can see down here, that's what it's supposed to be fitting. But I have a lot of miscellaneous tanks throughout the move and what I've had. And I kind of just filled up the gaps where I can with little two and a halves, tens, fifteens fives we'll go through that so that's that section there and this will be mostly grow out and just little projects maybe guppies in the future too a little more guppies it already has some inlers and stuff but this rack here next to it this is going to be all shrimp so we've got triple 40 gallon breeders and then back behind it we have a rack that holds 20 20 longs so 5, 10, 15, eventually will be 20. I just don't have enough tanks yet. But this is all going to be for shrimp eventually. And then I may or may not build another triple rack of 40s back behind here. And the way this is laid out is I got my dark substrate shrimp all on one side. And then my light substrate. And each tank variates from neocaridinia to caridinia, neocaridinia, caridinia, neocaridinia then on the bottom it's the opposite in case one goes down so you've got neocaridinia caridina it's opposite every which way you go here that way i don't get mixes of neocaridinia especially if i'm working on lines that i put a lot of time into you do not want them to mix up and you can see they're nice and dirty we'll talk about that here soon we'll talk about the fish in here soon and plants and other stuff but that will be what i like to call shrimp central and then that moves us over to this back area and back here you can see my template for painting tanks these are some utility tanks that i have these three are 29 highs 
a 20 gallon long. This is like some weird 60 gallon or 65 gallon divided tank that I picked up a long time ago and then 275s. In the future, these are going into the quarantine into the house because I like to have two different separate areas for that. That'll be a whole nother video that I show you guys. And then this 20 long eventually will turn into a shrimp tank. The reason why these tanks are still here, there's Shelly's in there, I got Endler's in there, I got baby, I hope baby Cardinal Tetra's in there, I'm pretty sure they are. And then miscellaneous fish here and there that I'm waiting to breed out or home. And then I'll probably turn these out into the greenhouse, which is gonna be on this back side of this wall. We'll talk about a little more of that here coming up as well but what's gonna go in this space here in the future which is one of my next projects after i get done with the quarantine racks in the house is a big fry rack system that i want to do it's going to be a little different that you, than you guys have seen but that's the space for that and then over on the other side of this this is more of the future construction space zone area eventually we'll tear this wall down we'll go out that way with the barn we'll see what happens with all this space so there's still room to grow and move things around and getting around from that brings me up to this front space here which eventually i may design this out but it's going to be for special breeding projects and other things just kind of experiment with but in this section the breeding section main breeding section i should say i've got 375s we got a 75 low boy 50 low boy 50 375s and then 355s turned to their side now eventually there are there is a custom tank i think it's a uh, 120 that would fit this space that i would like to build my way up to but who knows i kind of like how the low boys sitting out really easy to get into and I was planning on finishing this wall and doing like a stone finish and that way all these would have been in wall tanks. But I don't think I'm going to do that now because I am absolutely loving being able to get to each side at any way at any time. Like it just keeps things nice and open plus I can see through it. I won't feel so claustrophobic. It just keeps it nice and open like this. This is a great working space. So I'm not gonna end up paneling it and finishing it off the way I was thinking, but I will end up doing something with it. Matter of fact, I'll probably end up closing these off, put this door this way. That'll be the only entrance and then we can work up top a little more. And then inside here, I've got a sump, 75 gallon sump that's hooked up, which to me, a sump is an extra tank in my book. This thing's filthy, absolutely filthy, but full of fish. And I still gotta build some tops for this. Haven't really messed with it too much, but it does run. And what I do is I use, I just use this to turn the water over. And without that top, yeah, it spits a little bit at the beginning, just getting the air out. It'll settle down. She does that time to time. But what I'll do is I'll use this to just turn the water flow over, kind of do a water change, water exchange and makes for easy water changes in the future for all the little containers. But once I get some tops in there, I'll get some killifish and other stuff in here. I do got a couple where I've been putting some baby guppies. These are micro Procellia pictas, and I got some micro Procellia paray up here. These guys are brutal though. They uh, took out all their females, so I've only got males. I had six pair. And then over here, you can see I've got some 20 gallon highs. I'm a big fan of the 20 gallon highs. And as you notice, there's all kinds of different variation of tank sizes throughout this fish room. Cause uh, you know, variety is the spice of life, right? But these will be my breeding grow out kind of collection stuff. You can see where I've mounted up rocks. I'm working on breeding projects here. These are a lot of my original shrimp space area. There's a sump overflow. We got the 20s here, 55s. And then that moves us over to these, which is my wall of 40s. And eventually there'll be more 40s as I mentioned before. And then down here we've got the pond and we got the tubs. Which I can fill these all the way up because I got them framed up. This is actually a frame that holds two 125 longs. Who knows, one day maybe I'll use it. But right now at least it's being put to use. 
and a couple of scattered things. Eventually I'm gonna work these off. That goes into the QT house and then the pond. All right, so that was a quick overview of it. Now we can jump into what's into the aquarium. And we'll start in the same sequence. We'll start from here, back side of that, shrimp central, back wall. Then we'll flow on through, back to here, back to there. We'll do it. In a lot of my aquariums, you can see where fish are really my main focus, the livestock, not so much to the plants. I've got plants doing all right here and there, but I have been letting the algae go, which is easy to fix. I wanted to do a dirty fish room tour before I give you guys like the, a more clean look fish room tour. But starting, starting here on the bottom, see down there, I've got some celestial pearl danios, CPDs, big breeding group actually probably need to get more top coverage on them but what happens is they lay their eggs they go through the grate of this mesh and there's shrimp in here too helps keep things clean and then naturally the babies will start growing up in here and uh getting bigger in different phases and makes breeding super super easy then in here it looks like it's empty there's actually a bunch of Neolamprologus brachardi daffodils in here. They just hide within this crypt. They have turned this crypt into their metropolis, kind of like they do with rocks. They just hide in there. Oh, there's one. He's out and about. See him back there. It's hard to get the camera to focus to it with everything going on in front of it. There you are. But there's actually a window, if I don't shut this door, that shines and creates a lot of this algae. That's what I get a lot of it from. So as long as I keep that door shut, this stuff doesn't really grow. And one other thing you'll notice, there's no filters, no airlines or anything. These are just aquariums. This one is the only one with anything in it, and it's got a power head. And in here, there's actually two huge purple knight sword underneath all this algae. I currently fished all the fish. It had hatchet fish. We'll see those fish later, but I was trying to do some breeding in here, but I realized I didn't have a male, so that didn't work out. No airlines. This is the only thing that actually has like a filter power head or anything of the sort. What you can see down here, and that's because these guys really do need some flow to them, the mascara barbs. They just thrive and do better with some kind of flow. I don't need all the oxygen bubbles. They do need some flow. And these are my mascara barbs. Sorry for the dirty tank. We'll get it cleaned up because these guys are actually gonna go over into this section for breeding here later. So they won't even be in here much longer. I do got some Chilnathernia alani in there with them as well as a few coral blue platys have raised up as young in these with those. Then we got Brazilian penny ward up top. And then down below from that we have just a tank full of Taiwan lily. The, it has pretty much become a huge mat in here. You see how thick a Taiwan lily it is. Then a ton of rice fish that I have bred out. This was kind of my catch all for them. Absolutely love this tank. Glare kind of bites on it, but it is what it is. And yeah, the reason why this is a big old mess now is because and here I'm tearing out this shower to add a water filtration system. But it's going to be a pain to get this shower out. Because if I can get this thing out in one piece, I can probably make an aquarium out of it. But I'm going to have to tear out my wall to get that thing out of here. Because it does not fit through the door. I don't know how they got it in here. But anyways, back to down here. The tank underneath it is Brazilian pennywort. And you notice that it's only got half the water because I don't want them to slip out. They can jump, they can slip out and jump out. This is where I house my rope fish. I've got a trio here of rope fish. Two females, one male. I'm hoping to get them into a breeding situation soon. They live up underneath this Brazilian pennywort. They absolutely love it. Everybody's waiting to get fed right now. That's my drying rack over there. But that does it for these 75 gallons. And I know there's a lot to these. You guys will have questions. I do have live Q&A every Friday night, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time PM for just that. But here with these 40 gallons, down here I've got a bunch of pogo stem and stilata octopus floating, which makes great for fry hide. As much as I wanted to clean out all this algae, I just can't because this is a fry tank. And they kind of rely on the algae 
for microscopic organisms and things to feed off that. They can actually feed off of it as well. Which this is loaded up with a bunch of Melanotania picta aru twos. Same with the tank up above it, but it's full of pearlweed. And for some reason, my pearlweed just hasn't been growing that great. There you can see a bunch of the babies. A few different sizes. It's best to get the bigger ones out, help from keeping to eat the smaller ones, but in this kind of situation, I can get away with that. But for some reason, I've been getting this weird algae on this pearly. That's why you guys haven't seen it in stock. It's just, I can't, I don't have any clean stuff to give you yet. But hopefully I'll get that figured out here soon. So a bunch of Melanotania picked a root twos going on there. And up above here, this tank's about ready to get reset. There's actually crypt huteroy growing up underneath that. There's a Philippine fern growing up underneath that. And so a few other plants growing up underneath this algae. So whenever I peel this away, you'll see all those plants underneath, which they're actually growing up underneath this algae. I've done this so many times. I've kind of figured out how it evolves through time and how I can not have to worry about it and still be able to use it. Like, yeah, the plants aren't growing as fast as they can. They are still growing and this helps stabilize the aquarium much better because once I pull this out, it won't grow back like this as fast or as crazy because it's already pulled out a lot of those excess nutrients. But it's also loaded with the platinum rice fish. You'll see a lot of these throughout the fish room. But that does it for the 340s on that side. Now off to the back side with all the weird tanks. We've got 20 gallon highs. We've got these weird 13, weird 15. I think that's a two and a half. Five gallons, 10 gallons. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. But let's start here at the bottom. Down here I've got some blue dream and some steak inlers. Really cool inler, rare inler. And you can see, well, kind of see, besides the glare, it is super dark in this tank because it is absolutely covered with Pacopa and Rhesia and Pearlweed. Same with the tank next to it. Wow, you can see how the Taiwan Lily hair is meshing into all that. Looking really cool over there. But believe it or not, with the flashlight on, you can see back there where there's actually plants, crypts, there's actually a big crip right there. It's hard to see with this camera and the lens and the focus, but there is plants growing up underneath all that in this super dark tank. Same with this one. Like you can see, it's hardly anything compared because it's just fully taken over. I've actually, I should pull some of the Sarishi. I did recently, but it's starting to grow a thin layer back. It's actually got a bunch of Daphne in here, some shrimp, snails, crips underneath. And next to it, I've got a bunch of dwarf neon rainbow fish, plus coral blue platies, some guppy grass, yard sand. And I don't know what these plants are. These actually come from the yard sand. I got this sand from a wetter area of the yard. So right now those are kind of mystery plants. Besides this, some kind of, I don't know. And then here I've got yard sand planted with some tiger bow, slowly growing. I do got mystery snails here and there doing work. And as far as fish, this one's currently empty. And then this one is currently empty. Once again, not sure what these plants are. These are the ones that come from my yard. Same with this. And there's some coral blue platies in there. I've got some, I got a breeding trio of dwarf neons in this one where it's just nothing but algae. I'm not seeing any babies up top right now, but. And then we've got a, another empty 20 down here. And moving up top, this just needs the glass clean. Looks like there's a dwarf neon in there. I know there's a loach, there's the tetras. Here we've got some classioensis. To be honest, it's been so long. I'm not sure if that's a melanotania. I believe it's a melanotania classioensis. And here I've got some baby rainbows somewhere. They're all hidden. And I've got some young gold dust platies. Trying to get some size to them. Little 10 gallons here. I do got a five gallon to put here eventually. Eventually, I would like to get a bunch of 20 highs and do this proper. That's down the road to when I can actually afford to do so. And then move these tanks on to something else. And then here are the Chilonotherni Fasciata Pangae. Moving up under some guppy grass. There we go, more of their color. I gotta get tanks to show these off more too. 
I got a lot of different fish that I would like to get into bigger spaces, but I'm working on that. That's why the fry rack will be huge for this fish room. It opened up a lot of those like 40s and stuff. And down here I've got some blue dreams. Also Daphnia tank, ton of pilo moss growing up underneath Risha and Bacopa monerae. And those are the 15s. This is a 13. The front's starting to peel off. I peeled a little bit out of it and it must have killed the connection to everything. Now it's really starting to peel off. Also got some rainbow tiger antlers in here. And if you look up above, there's like all kinds of space for fry to live. It's just a root mess like crazy. So hopefully they should pop off. And then here, just a little backup Daphnia culture that I feed green water. Then another Daphnia culture in this tank. Now making our way to the top, a cool thing about this row, it actually lined up. You can see the light there to where I could see the tanks on the side here. And when I'm sitting back here in my chair, I can see them through that gap as well. So some of these, I don't know, I may take the painted ones out and keep them cleared through because it's cool to see it like that it actually happened in shrimp central too which we're about to get to where where you can see all the way down it granted you keep the sides clean that might be a pain eventually that will hopefully naturally clean itself throughout the shrimp eating it up anyways back to this back to the top i'd say so two and a half gallon two and a half gallon five gallon a weird five gallon another five gallon and actually a 20 high what it needs to be platinum rice fish platinum rice fish there's a florida flag fish in here but he is hiding and it's one that i actually raised up from a pair i got you'll see those here in a little bit and then more rice fish in here somewhere oh there they are they're down at the bottom a little glass cleaning will go a long way for me um, let's see and then some more rainbow fish dwarf neons and then in here we've got some red type of inler and then a bunch of green water and i haven't done water changes in like months there is no water change regiment as since i've been here i top off mostly here's some starburst inlers on the next row open space more dwarf neons some guppy grass here are some tetras i got from dan and Ken aquatic shout out to him Brought these with me. Start with an M. I cannot remember the name of them. There's some crazy rare ones. And here I've got some more rainbow fish. Babies. They're all freaking out. They're hungry. But here's the back end of that. It's kind of a mess. But eventually we'll get on water change systems. More of a regiment. We'll get these plants going a little better. Clean these tanks up now that they've kind of done their time as far as cycling and balancing themselves, getting some beneficial bacteria established. That's what it's all about. It's getting that beneficial bacteria established more and more. And the algae is part of that process. Especially if you watch in the springtime, you'll see a bunch of algae will start popping up. A bunch of Daphne will start popping up. That's what signals fish to start breeding. That's actually a really good trigger is Daphne. That's why I keep cultures but anyways i make videos about all that kind of stuff plus we'll be coming out with more so hit the subscribe button if you're liking this stuff because i try to share it all with you guys but let's jump into shrimp central here we've got the triple stack of 40 gallon breeders here i've got neo caradina side this is my caradina side and as far as the setup for the neo caradina side i actually found all this rock in my yard that has it's like this limestone kind of fossilized rock. It's like crushed coral rock. And over here, it's hard to see because there's a lot of tannins in it. I've got more of a, a granite stone, cobblestone, and also a bunch of driftwood to create my mounds and nurseries for my shrimp. There you can see that one's still floating, but. And I did use special substrate Brightwell to help with the acidity here. My water is 170 coming out, which is much different than Indiana where I used to live, where it was 400 some. I used to have liquid hard rock. Now I've kind of got neutral, more acidic water. That's why this limestone really helps. And as you can see, my blue dream, they're just going wild in here. They're really taking off. Got a nice colony of these really starting to go. And I don't pull out of these yet. I'm just letting them kind of establish themselves. You also see rice fish in here. We'll talk about that later. May, some of you guys may have seen my videos on it. And down below, these are my fire reds. Also platinum rice fish babies in there. But those fire reds are on fire for sure. 
There's some young there. Not quite going as crazy as the Blue Dreams have, but this is also, there's a lot of hiding places in here for them. As you can see, between the algae and all the rock that's below it, there's just mounds and mounds for them to eat off of. And as you can see, with either shrimp type, they do really love this rock. They graze on it all day long. Believe it or not, there's supposed to be a bunch of moss underneath that algae as well. But with my lights and my no water changes and my feeding, mostly a lot of this algae growth comes from my food and the no water changes, and the high light. So that's a lot of lumen power that's only 6,500K. It's not full spectrum either. But it's a cheap light when you're just starting and trying to build a fish room compared to trying to buy more expensive lights. Inhibit your growth of tanks. It depends on what you're going with. Collectoritis, or are you just going for a few select tanks? For me, I'm working on a budget, so I had to use these lights. And they work good, but they're not the best. And now, so we got the red, we got the blue, now moving up to the yellow. Not sure if we're going to be able to see these or not. These actually use lava rock. Oh, there's one. They are super bright, so if they're around, we'll be able to see them. They are 24 karat golden back neocaridinas. I've been working on this line forever. And that lava rock will give it great contrast with a mix of Eco Complete for them to for them to really color up on. Oh, there we can see them really nice. Look at that. There's some good ones. And then we've got a crypt in here. I think it's a red metallic. Also guppy grass. That was mostly for the rice fish to breed into. Which were recently moved out. See if I can find some. There is some baby rice fish. Oh, there's one. There's some of the real young fry. They can be so hard to pick up on camera sometimes. Especially if they contrast to any of that guppy grass, they blend right in. So what's nice about these stands, here you can see the shrimp. So I can also see these tanks on their side. So I don't only, only get the front view, I also get a side view from them. And with the caradinas, I'll actually get to look inside of the nursery, which is cool. All right, now moving back here. Oh, and I did use yard sand for them. So this is yard sand. And for the red Neo Caradinas, I used Eco Complete. For my blues, I used the Carib Sea Blue. Or it might actually be some yard sand. I can't remember. I know this one's yard sand, but I don't know if the, I can't, I think this is Carib Sea Blue. Then Eco Complete, Brightwell. All right, now to the 20 longs. This is the rack that holds the 20, 20 longs and splits up with the Neo Caradina and Caradina. Here I've got the Natropus Hyperlepterus. This is actually a native Florida fish. I was given two from the legendary Bill Shields. Thank you for these, these guys. I absolutely love them. And you can see how they're not shy at all, but a very, very beautiful fish. And I hope to get these guys breeding. They're actually in here. I was hoping they'd try to go breed over by the rocks, but they always hang out up front, so I don't know. They're helping cycle it, get it all nice and dirty. But here I've got some Neo Caradina snowballs. Colony just starting off. My camera does not want to stay focused. But there's like 10 or so in there. I've got some babies going on too. But I just threw these in here maybe a couple weeks ago. But I have had them in quarantine for a long time, over a month. Uh, hopefully they get going soon. A lot of these are still empty, especially the Caradina. I haven't been messing with them a whole lot because, well, I can't really afford them at this point. But I do hope to be able to buy some stock at some point. And just find proper breeders for Caradinas. If you're a home breeder and you got a legit stock of either orange-eyed tigers or any specialized kind of Caradina, holler at me. I can uh, help you out. You can help me out. And who knows? Maybe bring some business your way. I hear some crystal, black crystal bees. They seem to be doing pretty good. I haven't seen any babies out of them yet, but it looks like these are my two males. So hopefully the females are in this rock pile somewhere and uh, pregnant. It should be about to that point where they've been in here long enough. I should be starting to see something out of them. Once again, could use a good tank scraping. And got some various moss, crypts, other plants, bacopa, whatnot. And lots of biofilm for them. Then in here, I've got orange line going. They're hard to see because, well, they're all back there in the 
nursery. And also got a tank of painted fire reds. These are the younger ones. Some of the nice females were out. Oh, there's one there, but it's kind of hidden. So another tank of those. Oh, there's some more on the rock. Start looking and you'll find them. Then also have one of them with uh, blue velvets. Got trying to go here. That does it for this side. As you can see, I'm still growing here. This is just my dark substrate. That way certain shrimp contrast better on certain substrates. If not, they'll try to blend other ways, which can make it hard to line them out. Which brings us to the lighter side of the shrimp rack. This is the caradina side and then the lighter sand substrate. Which a lot of these are empty, but still the same rock situation. More granite rock for the caradina, more lime rock for the neo caradina. I may try, I will probably try the lime rock with the caradina at some point just to see what happens. Then I also got this really neat tank down here where this is all pretty much yard sand in this whole rack. And I would get fine roots, leaves, and other materials. The glare in this fish room is just really tough. One day I'll work on that too. You can still kind of see like the little pebbles, the leaf litter, everything else. In this pile, there's actually, there's a rabbit snail. They're getting picked on by my ram's horn snails. Their shell was just, I always noticed that these other snails were just eating away at their shell. So I stuck them in here with this lime rock. There you can see one up on the lime rock. Looks like their shell's getting a little better. They're actually all over this tank. Oh, there went one flying down from the top. So they like it in here. And as you can see, you can see all the way down. I do got a group of green jades here. Hard to see green on them without the light, but yeah, these are pretty solid deep. Kind of like blue green more like, but definitely more solid green. I'm still working on getting light, so bear with me here. Do got some platinum rice fish. They're helping to eat the biofilm. Look how clear that top is compared to like something like this. What I'll do is I'll put these rice fish in a tank like this and it'll end up looking like that. Plus I may get some babies out of it. As far as the shrimp and fish on this side, that's it is just the green jades and then the rice fish because it's a process. It doesn't all happen overnight. All right, so there's shrimp central. Now moving on back here. We've got the misfit tanks that need rehomed or put somewhere else. And this 20 long down here, here you can see a bunch of babies. They don't act like rainbow fish. They stay more towards the midwater and bottom than the top as rainbow fish would. So I'm hoping they're cardinal tetras. So I only had those rainbow fish in here for a day, maybe three days. And these fish like popped up like the day after. So who knows? We got moss going in there. Believe it or not, there's hardly any light on this tank. Look at the plants. That doesn't tell you anything. The moss is doing really good. The Anubius is doing good. It's the Pontagetan's doing well. And it's hardly got any light on it. But the ones that got the direct light, boom, blasted algae. Got some Millennium Orange Albino Rainbows in here. Platinum Rice Fish in that one. Platinum Rice Fish in this one. We've got, there you can see some shellies breeding out. This is the 29 high in front. And then here, some rainbow tiger inlers. You can see a male, female. You can see a couple back there. This was kind of the coal misfit group. And here I've got a bunch of baby rainbow fish. Big bed of algae. You can see some of them getting good size on them. That's a nice breeding tank though, with just all that algae. Whole 75 gallon worth. And 29 high with just plants, nothing in there yet. You'll see it often throughout the fish room. I've got a lot of, got a lot of buches. Kiteroi crip. And this tank has got a hodgepodge. Gold mountain minnows. It's got four female glossolepis maculosis. Hatchet fish there. A couple of hatchet fish in there. There's actually some really big pandagaras in here as well. And a hodgepodge, just absolute hodgepodge of plants. Once again, light lighting. That does it for my misfit tanks over here. And there you can see some of that lime rock. Which brings us to this section. So I showed you guys this earlier. But in these 20 highs over here, got a bunch of dwarf neon rainbow fish. These actually have no light over these three. Well, kind of goes over that. These are real low ambient light tanks. And Volbitis actually loves that. A lot of mosses, a lot of plants actually love this real low. They won't grow real fast. They do like this real low light. You see the moss in here. A lot of this is diatoms on the tank. 
I had some rice fish in here, but they weren't really properly set up. I haven't seen any babies yet. I was hoping to see some. I had a couple orange rice fish colonies in here, which are now actually up in this tank up above here, which definitely now they got some stuff to float and lay eggs on, plus lots of rock. Should get something out of them now. Then the way I had them split up, maybe they didn't like it. I don't know. So I'm still testing out these setups to see how they really react. Plus trying to get them to grow out a little more and just getting plants. When you're starting out a fish room like this, you're growing out plants as well to try to fit into your tanks. I do have some, if I spent the time, I could probably do it a little better, but it's a lot to manage. And here I've got the black rice fish. I'm actually gonna be moving them into one of these 75s as well. Hopefully they lay some eggs for me. Always such curious fish. And next to them, I've got some cardinal tetras down there. Nice rock pile, beautiful flanders, moss. And then over on the other side, I used to have some picta babies in there, but I have moved them. And then that'll eventually be a catch-all, so whenever I'm ready to move these from breeding, I'll take my rice fish and my cardinals. Well, granted, these are going to a 75, but say I had two types of fish or even one type of fish, I'd just play musical fish within these three tanks. So if this has babies and needs to grow out, then they have somewhere else to go to either breed or community tank. And then possibly breed from a community tank. So it's a great triple action breeding setup. Which brings me to these bottom tanks. I've got some young picta babies that I have scrapped up from breeding while all my tanks were on the ground. Because when I first moved in here, none of this existed. This was just a cleared out barn, I don't know, seven, eight months ago, and everything was on the ground. For those who have been watching me know what I'm talking about. Just kind of literally literally built this from the ground up. But that does it for these 20s. And then up here, I've got some Celebes half beaks, which they're not quite babies anymore. It used to be. I pulled these guys out of the pond, which you see the pond here later. There's the Nubius, other things in there. A bunch of platinum rice fish. Used to be babies as well. Uh, baby CPD. And underneath them, we've got moss and fire reds. Fire reds are going. There is probably more in here than I think. They really are nice. But with the way fire reds go, they just, they always go like crazy. So I have to build my numbers up. That's why they've been out of stock a lot. You can see I've got more back here. Platinum rice fish. I got more hair. It's just once you pull out of a tank for too long, they'll quit breeding for you. So you gotta give them cool, t cool down periods. And below them, I have my yellows. Which the yellows really like to show up for the camera. Need to pull that guy. Look at that big old mama. These are more of the Riley kind of cold. You can see that calico looking shrimp. He's pretty wild looking. Oh, there's a blue in there with them too. And if there's actually quite a few tanks where there's quite a bit of coals. There's rainbow fish in here. I think those are young pictas. Willow moss. And then this is more straight line yellows as well, like the other tank. And then a bunch of red metallic crip. This has a bunch of Bacopa Carolina. It's in that yellow tank as well. But those two colonies are really solid. And all my Neos, you guys know me with my Neos. But that's it for this rack. And over to the 55s, the in-wall, or was going to be in-wall tanks. Nothing in these yet. I do have plans for them. I haven't figured out exactly how I'm gonna design them because since you got that long view, you can really trick and play it out. So I really want to think about that before I jump into it. If you're an aquascaper, want to come down and aquascape one, hit me up. Down here, I've got a bunch of mystery snails, gold mystery snails, coral blue platies, and actually a bunch of buch and stuff underneath the guppy grass. And let's see, should be... Uh, also, still be half beaks in here, but they're being really camera shy today because I've snagged them from the top before. I don't think they want to leave this tank, but there's actually... Quite a few, probably like eight Celebes half beaks in there. And over here, which I don't know, we might move this tank out because I do like to see through. We'll see. But let me pop to the other side of this tank and we'll just hit these tanks from the front view. Here's that 55 we were just looking at. Of course, you can't see much with the guppy grass. It doesn't look like it goes down forever. But the 75 next to it, 
There's a huge roy growing nicely up underneath a bunch of guppy grass, algae, anubias, just a hodgepodge of stuff. You see the algae actually starting to die here. But there's a bunch of little babies swimming at the top of the tank. This is a dwarf neon breeding tank, also a shrimp call tank. Not seeing any of the parents. There's a lot of space to hide. There's a trio in here, but definitely a lot of babies. Hard to see them all because the camera can't layer and focus on everything. They move, there's so many of them. So they're doing their thing in there and the tank right above it is a bunch of pogo stimmen, stellata, octopus, and I've got platinum rice fish in here cleaning them up because these are a fairly new setup aquariums. Yeah, man, is that all water hardness? Oh, that's from the inside. It's just water hardness stains. And of course, we'll need scraped off. This should be a great breeding ground for these rice fish. Eventually though, this is gonna be my rope fish breeding tank. I just wanna mature it up a little more. And I've got sand in here, but then I've also got lots of cavities for eggs to fall into that can't get predated and for the fry are young to grow and raise up and live in big enough, hopefully, to where they won't get predated. So we'll see how this goes. Once again, subscribe if you wanna see that. And then up top, similar situation, but mounted it more. That way I could plant around the edges, maybe plant in the front or even leave open. That way you got a little bit of different bedding. I'll probably put the black rice fish in here. I just gotta get a floating plant in there for them. I haven't figured out which one yet though. And then as far as these tanks over here, this 50 gallon low boy, absolutely loving this. You guys have seen, I have a bunch of rice fish, miscellaneous ones just all around the fish room. And this is gonna be my catch all for them. So after this fish room tour, I'm gonna have a bunch of open up tanks because I will be moving a lot of them platinum rice fish in here. Now I've got some pearl weed wrapped around. It's struggling to make its ground, but I do see some new growth, which is good. But I'm absolutely loving this tank with those rice fish in it. It'll be cool to see it just overloaded with them. And then nothing on the top and the bottom one, but down below here on this side of these 75s. And down here, I've got another tank that needs scraping. It's got some mascara barbs, young ones, and some cherry barbs. We've got the red platies. We got the golden white clouds. We've got the pogo stim and stellata. There's a female albino rainbow fish in there. Also, these really cool catfish. Some of you guys may have seen these from the big tank I had, the 240 in the old house that I had. They're in here still doing their thing. I would like to try to breed those out, but I don't even have a clue how to even start on those. We'll get it cleaned up here in the future. But it's kind of been a catch-all as well. And then newly set up one up above it. Same kind of technique, full layer out. I didn't want to leave any edges or ends. That way the young have a complete full setup up underneath the rock and just labyrinths to live in. But we got the Bacopa Carolina. And you can see here kind of how I planted it on its side. Now with it being planted on its side and pinned down, it's gonna start raising shoots up on the side, which will help fill that in a bit faster. And also some guppy grass, which is kind of wild. The guppy grass has settled down to the bottom now. It's not even floating weird and then up here the tank that i showed you with the orange rice fish i can't remember what plant this is different kind of floating plant but these two tanks will eventually be mascara bar breeding tanks hopefully i get more out of them they are trickle spawners but i got a decent sized group that i could at least maybe get a few out of here and there playing some musical fish with them so that does it with that front section there which brings us onto this side of all the 40s the quadruple 40s may have to get a ladder for this we'll start down here over on this side i've got some panda guppies that never ended up breeding out for me i don't know if they're just too old coral platies that is a moment i crypt reason why i'm looking at this from afar is because i don't want to scare this one fish that's next to him to show you guys and it's covered with rishia as well now the tank next to him the fish that i'm talking about you see him up at the top they're actually in breed mode he is chasing her this is the glossolepis maculosus i talk about him all the time look at that action so he's got that stripe on his head boom boom 
Look at those colors, beautiful. So I know these guys should be breeding now, as you can see. And they've got about a week more in this tank before I should be able to pull them and then start waiting for babies. It's got Pogo stem in it, Brazilian Pennywort floating at top, the Nuri Rosamade and Crip. Man, look at that. Such a unique rainbow. It gets more spotted than it has lines. But his are so intense right now. It's almost looking like lines. Quick little guy too. And then next to them, green water tank here. I've got some gold dust platies. Younger ones in there. Actually got some, got loose penis in there. Send it on us, loose penis, younger ones of those. Also got quite a few clown killies in here. There's probably about 10 clown killies. And I got a rare Ferraginia crypt. Barely growing up underneath there. And up above them in this Bacopa Carolina forest. As you can see, I've got some different lighting going here. Eventually, I would like to move back onto the full spectrum. I am testing a few lights. These are cheaper ones that you get off of eBay. You can already tell a difference on my stem plants and even this Bacopa Carolina. I don't know because it's two lights, but this actually used to be more green water. And since I changed this light out, put this light on top of it, which actually added more light to it, but with the spectrum, it's actually been helping kill off that green water. But ooh, actually seen some, some rice fish. These are some rare rice fish. I can't even remember the name of them. Then I've also got some Madagascar rainbow fish in here. I'll put the name on the screen here. Rice fish, you can see nice yellow tail to them. There's one of those rainbow fish, they're the quick ones. And then up above them, I've got another group of Glossolepis maculosus. Here's what a Glossolepis maculosus female looks like. There you can see the male. I got another group up. I got another pair up here breeding. Nice little breeding ground for them. And then next to them, and moving up this way next to them, I've got the gold dust platies where you've seen their babies. The breeding group of them, which I like to use them like the rice fish where I'll clean tanks with them. But if you look in here, it doesn't look like there's just anything but them in this aquarium. But if you look into this crypt, there's actually a bunch of Cynodonis cats. Look at them hiding up in that crypt trying to look like leaves are just blending in really neat and they're decent size too and then up underneath them we have rotalia colorado starting to grow out a lot better now that i've got a full spectrum light on them not just the 6500k and platinum rice fish granted i did do a water change in this tank i didn't scrape it but i did do a water change which always helps with the plants. Water changes do much more for plants than most anything. Lots of those in there. So glad to see the stems really starting to take off. Then next to them, we've got a group of rainbow tiger antlers. This is kind of the main group. It is really female heavy. Here you can see some of the males. And if anybody knows, you know what these guys are like. These things are absolutely awesome. This is a strain that I created years and years ago and actually ended up overselling mine. Messed it up with trying to go with a different type of gen that didn't breed out like these guys bred out. I didn't have them anymore. So big shout out to Mandy Lynn for hooking me up with a nice strain of them to get back going again. Which I'm so happy to have this fish in my fish room. You guys who know, you know. And then up above them, we have Microposelia picta. But these things are super colorful. Even the females, look at this female. It's got a lot of color to her. There you see her. It's got a lot of that orange, even some blue in her. Not all of them are like that, but I'm sure you can selectively breed for that. And I probably will. So these are really cool. These are wild fish. This is how they look. Not a designer strain like most. Man, look at that female. That female and then that male. Them two right there, they need their own tank. This is how you end up with so many tanks. This tank's about as natural as you get. This is the yard dirt, yard plants coming through it as well. Needs a good scraping. But up above them, we got tanks we're gonna have to get a ladder for. Well, I had to take a little break from the fish room video to go. There's this puppy showed up at our house that go with Sarah, I'm gonna take it to the barn. So he's gonna join us for the rest of this fish room tour. Karen, this is Christmas Eve. This dog just showed up. I don't know whose it is. It's gotta be somebody's dog. I don't know whose it is though. And uh, it's super cold outside. It's like 20 degrees outside. So I don't wanna leave it outside. And uh, leave Sarah, if she hears somebody holler, I'm gonna call the neighbors, see what happens. Well, what's up, buddy? Looks like it broke its leash. 
It's all busted up underneath it. Come here, pup. <whistles> Friendly dog. Come here, pup. Let's see where it's all busted up underneath. Where did you come from, huh? Looks like he's been fed. You got a big belly. You got a full belly. Whose puppy are you? Well, well. Hey, hang. Look at this guy. Are you begging? What are you doing? You ready? Oh my gosh. You're a friendly little guy. Come on. Here we are, up on the ladder at these top ambient tanks. As you can see, no light. They do get the light from the top of the barn. There, you can see it better. And then up here at the top tanks on this side, I've got a Anubius. This is the barter eye. There's also a baby rainbow fish in here. I believe it's a rainbow fish. And I don't even feed this tank. As you can see, no lights, no tanks. No lights, no filter, or no nothing. One next to it is empty. And the net one next to that is supposed to have snow white Anubius, but looking more like a pinto. And it's also got some coral blue platies. I don't even feed that aquarium. It just sustains themselves. It's an interesting experiment. That does it for my 40 by 40 rack. Now onto my pond section. And now for the pond. I guess we'll go ahead and start around it and then we'll jump into that. Over here I have a 29 high full of guppy grass and then a tote barely full of water. There's actually a bunch of CBD babies in here. You can see some swimming around. Luckily the dog didn't drink them all up. And in this tank is a is a pair of Florida flagfish. They're the one that I got the baby from. And here you can see some small fish there. Quite a few small fish and also some juvenile. But then there's the big adult. These are cuddle punk tatus, the sea punks and some moment eye crip and they're really taking off in here then next to them i have a breeding pair of dwarf neon rainbow fish of course we're not going to be able to see those then in here's kind of a hodgepodge we've got fire reds we've got rainbow fish and we also got baby celebes half beaks up top and last but not least we got the 470 gallon boswell pond and I've had this pond for quite some time now. It's kind of been my catch-all for everything. And it's just a temporary pond. Eventually, I would like to build something big out of it. Hey, 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 quit drinking out of that. No, 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 stop. Hey. Bruh, stop, please. All right, anyways. Eventually, I want to build something that's more permanent, not something temporary like this. But it, this has been holding really well. And here in the front, you can see I've got some shells. I've got shellies in there. They've actually been breeding. You should see some tiny little babies here. There's some of different sizes. You see medium sizes, big sizes. So they are colonizing. So I, I've put shells all the way down the whole end wall there. And then we got a bunch of pogo stemming, stellata, huge, huge group, and then Tons of rainbow fish. So many different types of rainbow fish. Sent it on a sluice of pennants, just went flying by. That's what that bowl is in there, is actually to catch eggs from those sent it on a sluice of pennants. And chilling up there, and you got Al and I all fired up there. Door to the eye. Upper tours, there's a Melanotania Goldii decai. There's Bowman eye, there's Picta Rutus. Heteroid Crips, Nuri Crips, Glossolophus maculosus, Dwarf Neons. There's a Procatopus similis. There's all kinds of crazy stuff in here. Um, used to have Platinum Rice Fish in here as well. I've got my Celebes half big Breeders in here. There you see an Emperor Tetra. My Heteroid Crip is actually melting right now with the cold and the cement. I think it got to it. Oh, here you can see one of the Celebes males, red fins, black fins, really cool looking. And there's quite a few in there. Get nice top down views. Absolutely love this. Eventually I'd like to get the light off of it and build a stand for it. It'll be a long time till I can get to this pond build project. That'll probably be more towards summer 2023. Right here you see all the Shelly shells down the aisle. Hey, 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 get out of here. Good thing is you can go all around this pond. There's always different views. I'm loving it. It was well worth the money. 
because if you go dollar per gallon, I think they're like 600 bucks now. It was around 500 when I bought it, maybe a little more. But still, per gallon, not a bad deal. Also, eventually on this side, I would like to clean this up and get some 20 gallon high racks going here and just have a bunch of guppies. That would be my main guppy area. The puppy does have a warm spot to lay tonight. We gave him some flea meds. He wasn't doing too good as far as that front. And tell they're bothering him, but we'll take care of you, buddy. Get some rest. He's been a good boy. And I know some of you guys may be wondering, where's my killifish and stuff at? Well, they're in the quarantine house just because it's set up better for them. I've got tops over there and I've got containers for them, which I will make a video of all that coming up here soon. So subscribe or stay tuned if you wanna see that. Well, thank you for joining us for this fish room tour. I know it was a longer one, but I wanted to give you guys a full in depth one. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, if you'd hit the like button, that would be awesome of you. If you got questions, comments, leave them down below. Hopefully I can find this guy at home or figure that out soon. Who knew? You just never know what's gonna happen over here. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and you like this content. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace, have a good one.